Welcome back to Our Walk in Christ. Well, today we have an important discussion talking about the Southern Baptist Convention and critical race theory. This is an interesting discussion that it bears talking about because there's a couple of important lessons. Obviously, the Southern Baptist Convention is the largest Protestant denomination, I believe. I'm not sure there's one bigger. Maybe there is out there somewhere. Uh, but as far as organized denominations. Now, one of the things I'm going to throw out here as we start is what's going on in the church threatens to break it apart. And it is for this reason I warn people joining a church with such a large hierarchical structure is probably a problematic thing. This is indeed the problem with the Catholic Church. You have to hold this form of structure together so well that when sin enters in and we are sinful people, so it will enter in, it threatens it. And so corruption tries to hide the sin. But don't forget, your sin will find you out. And what you attempt to hide, God blasts from the rooftops, which is why the pedophiles are going to be exposed, why the disgusting garbage is going to be exposed. And we're not just talking the Catholic Church. The same thing happened in independent fundamental Baptist churches. So there's a lot of things to be said that maybe we should be avoiding joining our churches together in some large hierarchical structure, because then what happens is some crazy thing starts coming down the pipeline and then it threatens the unity of the church. Whereas if you don't have any core denomination together, then you actually have a better chance of unity than trying to unify everybody under a sinful man-made uh, hierarchical structure. I mean, the scripture does not give us anything to suggest we should be organizing our scriptures into or organizing our churches into these massive man-made organizations. Here's the point of thumb. If the person in charge of your denomination were to walk through your church and most people don't know who he is, your denomination is too big. Leave it. Start something new. Just a thought. Okay. But we have to discuss this. Now, I'm going to do something very intentional here. We're not actually going to define critical race theory until near the end of this. The reason is I want you to go through what the Southern Baptist Convention went through with your own prejudices in place. So I'm not going to define critical race theory until we are halfway through our discussion. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump over into what caused the first uh, major ripple going on here. And this actually happened in June of 2019. So this is two years ago. This is pre-Floyd. This is pre-Koof. This is a while back when all this stuff is going on. Did I say two years? It was about three years at this point. Uh, was it was 1920. I get, I don't know, whatever it is, two years. So they have this statement and this is known as resolution nine. It's not listed here as resolution nine, but this is resolution nine. We're not going to read all of it. We're going to hit a few of the highlights. You can see it's dated June 1st, 2019. It discusses race and race theory. So why is the Southern Baptist Church talking about race and race theory? The fact that they even bring it up means that they are believing this false narrative that there is this implicit racism widespread in America and maybe even in the whole world. And we are going to get into that a little bit. But they start out by saying, whereas concerns have been raised by some evangelicals over the use of frameworks such as critical race theory and intersectionality, and whereas critical race theory is a set of analytical tools that explain how race continues to function in society, and intersectionality is in the study of how different personal characteristics overlap and inform one's experience. Um, whereas critical uh, race theory and intersectionality have been appropriated by individuals with worldviews that are contrary to the Christian faith, resulting in ideologies and methods that contradict scripture. So you look at this go, man, this looks pretty good. Well, they're going down through here. And then when we get to the bottom of it, here's their resolutions. We have whereas is, and then we have our resolutions. So we're going to start through and read the result. 
the messengers to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Birmingham, Alabama, June 11th and 12th, 2019, affirm scripture as the first, last, and sufficient authority with regard to how church seeks to redress social ills, and we reject any conduct, creeds, religious opinions which contradict scripture and be it further. Now, what they should have done right there is stop. You do not need to say anything else other than the scripture is our peer authority. But no, these guys continued on. Critical race theory and intersectionality should only be employed as analytical tools, subordinate to scripture, not as a transcendent ideological framework. In other words, we're giving some platform. Now, what do you know about these people involved in critical race theory? You give them a fraction of a picometer and they come for everything you got. You don't give these people anything. But here they are, second point resolved. It's a tool. Resolved, the gospel of Jesus Christ alone grants the power to change people in society because he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. Southern Baptists will carefully analyze how the information gleaned from these tools. Now, the tools are not talking about the gospel. The tools is critical race theory. Analytical tools are employed to address social dynamics and be it further the Southern Baptist churches and institutions repudiate the misuse of insights gained by critical race theory, intersectionality, and any unbiblical ideologies that can emerge from their use when absolutized as a worldview and that we deny any philosophical, theological, fundamental, uh, fundamentally defines individuals using categories identified as sin and scripture rather than the transcendent reality shared by every image bearer. That while we denounce the misuse of critical race theory and intersectionality, we do not deny ethic, gender, and cultural distinctions exist and are a gift from God and will give him absolute glory when all humanity gathers across his throne in worship because of the redemption accomplished by our resurrected Lord. And finally, the Son of the Baptist churches seek to exhibit this eschatological promise in our churches in the present uh, by focusing on unity in Christ among image bearers and rightly celebrating our differences as determined by God in the new creation. Now, most of this is very good, but where we start talking about CRT as being an analytical tool, which will help, this opens the door. It cracks the door open to have discussions. And the problem is with such a large man-made institution, what happened is that you have some pastors really agree with critical race theory. Other pastors really disagree with critical race theory. And it's not split down racial lines. It's not split down racial lines. Now, what happened is there was a little bit of shakeup in this. This caused a little bit of, of conflict. And a little after a year later, there was a little bit of shakeup because what happens is a lot of um, Southern Baptist Convention seminary presidents come down, they reaffirm the Baptist mission and declare critical race theory as incompatible. So now you have the, the large conglomeration that tells everybody what you're going to believe seems to be in somewhat conflicting with the seminaries. Whereas the uh, in the convention and in the hierarchical structure, they said this is an analytical tool to help you understand the framework and we need to figure out to how to use data involved in this analytical tool to help get into the gospel and whatever else we need to do. So this is really, uh, really where we're at. Now, the, the seminary professors in the Southern Baptist Convention come in and say, no, CRT is completely incompatible. And so this comes in and this uh, brings with it a number of different professors who are all coming in and saying the Baptist faith message uh, with the Council of Seminary Presidents in the Southern Baptist Convention has reaffirmed with eagerness the BFM status as the doctrinal statement that unites and defines the Southern Baptist cooperation and establishes the confessional unity of our convention. And in this, they declared that critical race theory, intersectionality, and any version of critical race theory is incompatible with the Baptist faith and message. So here we have the president of the, uh, 
convention and the conglomeration of the convention comes in and they start saying that we're going to use this as a tool to figure out our mission. The seminary professors come down and say, no, this isn't even a tool. It's completely contradictory to what we are going to do. And so this caused a little bit of a stir up. So looking at a few of their statements, we had statements from uh, Danny Akin, uh, Jason Allen, Jamie Dew, Adam Greenway, Jeff, uh, is it, is it Iorg, uh, Albert Moeller, and all of these guys affirmed that critical race theory is incompatible with the gospel mission of the Southern Baptist Convention. So when this happened, you have some high profile pastors in the Southern Baptist Convention. They start coming up and saying, yeah, we think that we want to um, we think that we want to to part ways. But before this, this is actually happening now this month or last month, I guess it's July now. So this is last month. Now, three critical race theory statements are proposed for the upcoming uh, proposed mission. This might have already happened. So I'm going to read through larger portions of this article because it's very uh, interesting. So Pastor Stephen Feinstein says he might not have proposed Resolution 9. Now, Resolution 9 is what we read first. This goes back to June 1st, 2019. This is the thing that caused so much disunity and so much breaking in the church. He comes in and says he might not have even proposed it if he knew how much split and controversy it would have caused. What do you mean you didn't know what kind of controversy it caused? Did you not see the writing on the walls that everybody in this country that wants to destroy this country wants to divide the country along such lines? We as Christians, we do not need to be concerned ourselves with falling on the right lines. We need to be concerned exclusively with preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to ask and answer this question later in our presentation here. But the question we're going to ask is, is critical race theory in alignment with the scriptures, neutral to the scriptures, or contrary to the scriptures? If it is contrary to the scriptures, it needs wholesale abandoned by every Christian mission. If it is complementary to the scriptures, then we can include it. If it is neutral, then it doesn't matter what we do. But what he says here is if he knew that this about the statement, he would have not penned it. So the innocuous sounding and non-binding statements adopted by the Southern Baptists who attended their 2019 annual meeting has contributed to a fierce battle over critical race theory. An academic approach to understanding systemic racism, the resolution allowed for CRT to be used as an analytical tool, but also stated that it should not be subordinate to scripture. The debate around CRT has only grown more contentious in the years following, even as the largest uh, nation's largest Protestant de denomination was unable to meet in person for two years because of the coup. Is oh my gosh, um, I think he just used the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> I had no idea if I could do it over again, I would have just shut my fingers up and not typed anything. No, you know what you should have done? You should have typed in the sum of the first part. You should have stopped at that first resolution. The scriptures it. Period. That's what you should have done. But anyway, um, he says uh, you know, he admits he may have naively thought it would be adopted and harmony would reign. If you really thought that, maybe you should give up your pastorate. This is not what happened, you think? As the 2021 Southern Baptist Convention annual meeting grapples with a number of serious challenges, at least a four-way presidential election, declining membership, charges and countercharges about how it handled abuse scam claims. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. You have a man-made structure that is so large in order to keep the outward appearance of integrity, you have to do all sorts of crazy scandalous things to make it look pure. Stop. Stop joining the other big churches. You don't need large denominations. You don't need gurus at the top. You don't need a president of the church. You need the Bible and people who actually have the boldness to read it and live by it. But I digress. Two-day gathering set to be June 15th in Nashville, 16,000 people, highest in 20. Five years says the CRT debate reached a higher dimension with the SBC's Council of Seminary Presidents issued a statement late last year declaring CRT and intersectionality 
Another academic theory that addresses exploitation when gender and race intersect are incompatible with the latest version of the denomination's faith statement. On Wednesday, two Southern Baptist pastors, Thomas Skoll of Florida and Tom Buck of Texas, called on uh, delegates to rescind Resolution 9. Now, the next couple paragraphs here, they're talking about they can't rescind a resolution. They only can issue a new one. Basically, you can't get rid of this stuff. Well, there's another thing. I got news for you, SBC. You're not writing scripture. What you write is not set in stone. Rescind it and publicly rescind it. And if you get all these pastors going, ah, let them go. Let them go to their own denomination. Let them go to their own thing. You have an obligation to stand on the scripture and the word of God. That's what you have the obligation to do. Rescind it. Say, what we wrote was not written by God. It's not in scriptures. It did not descend from Mount Sinai. We are abolishing it because we were wrong. And it's the fact that you do not want to admit when you're wrong is why you are involved in scandals to try and cover yourself up and make yourself look perfect when everyone knows you're not. Because you are fallen human beings like the rest of us. Resolution that was passed will always be in the record books, they write. However, the last uh, at least three, pro, uh, three proposed resolutions for 2021 meeting could be considered clarifications. One resolution proposed by Feinstein, despite his second thoughts, clarifies his view that critical race theory is not necessary, that any truths coming from it can also be found in scripture while acknowledging systemic racism exists. There's your problem. When you want to sit there and acknowledge that systemic racism exists, when two presidents ago we had a duly elected black man serving two terms, nearly every big police chief in inner cities are black people at this time. We don't have systemic racism. You guys are doing just fine. I, I mean, really. I know I'm just some racist white guy. I'm so racist, I don't even know how racist I am. But really. A second resolution is passed by Pastor, Pastor Todd Littleton, a minister and podcaster in Oklahoma, titled On the Incompatibility of Structural Racism and Oppression with the Baptist Faith and Message. His proposed resolution counters the seminary president's declaration against CRT. <laughs> Great. Interviewed shortly after the release of a leaked 2020 letter by Russell Moore, who recently resigned as pastor of Southern Baptist Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, Littleton said it's ironic there's a debate about the existence of structural racism. Here we are. We've got this big brouhaha over CRT and people claiming that we're not racist. And we've dealt with all that. People claiming we're not. Uh, another SBC pastor from Oklahoma, whose governor recently signed a bill into law, the legislation that bars schools from teaching concepts of critical race theory, is a supporter of the third, prop uh, third proposed resolution titled The Southern Baptists Against Racism. This statement affirms the seminary president's uh, determination that CRT is, and intersectionality do not align with their denominational faith statement. Says Christ is a unifier, says Burlinson. I do not see CRT as uniting. And I see it as dividing. Marxism has a goal of dividing. Yeah, CRT does not unite anybody. Uh, Pastor Dwight of Texas wrote an essay proposed Wednesday, uh, SBC Voices. It responds to those who connect CRT to German philosopher Marx. Okay. Uh, Derek Bell, who's considered the father of CRT, denied any Marxian influence. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to deny all the Marxian influence. It just looks remarkably like it. We'll get into this when we get into our definitions in a bit. So hold on to that point. So basically, it cuts down here. Uh, of course, we got uh, Vody Bachman. He is an African-American uh, dean of Zambia-based Divinity School. He's against the use of CRT. It says fault line, social justice movement, and evangelicals looming catastrophe to the development of passage resolution nine for which he faults the 2019 resolutions committee for opening the door with engagement. Amen, Vody. That's the problem, guys. That's the problem. Now, with this, several pastors have decided they're going to leave the convention very publicly because they think that CRT is 
uh, CRT is definitely, um, it, we need to embrace this. We need to endorse this. This is our new gospel. This is what will save us. Despite the entire thing teaches people how bad they really are. Let's go ahead and talk about that. So we're going to go to the Wikipedia page on critical race theory. So this is a movement that kind of started around the 60s. We're not going to read all this stuff up here. It basically is a, uh, it is a, uh, a subsuit of critical theory, which swallow hard critical theory is Marxism. If you look up what critical theory is, it is a system designed specifically to separate people into groups, oppressed and oppressor. Okay, that's what it's designed to do, oppressed and oppressor. That's what Marxism does. You might say, well, I'm not, I, I don't really agree with Marxism. Well, but your point is exactly it. Now, race theory, critical race theory, outlines the oppressed and the oppressor class as those being of the, uh, of the dominant class and the minority class as defined by race. So that's what they are doing. And uh, I want to get down into the uh, common themes because there is a little bit of discussion back and forth about what they are. Let's have a look at what these common themes are and see how well do these align with scripture and things like that. So the critique of liberalism, critical race theory, scholars question foundational liberal concepts such as enlightenment, rationalism, legal equality, and constitutional neutrality and challenge the incrementalist approach of traditional civil rights discourse. They favor race conscious approaches to social transformation, critiquing liberal ideas such as affirmation, colorblindness, role modeling, and merit principle. Okay. So let's break this part down. So they reject concepts as enlightenment rationalism. So enlightenment rationalism, this is a philosophy that kind of bred its way into postmodernism type view, although through a little bit around. So the constitution, the declaration of independence, these were enlightenment documents. The enlightenment basically said, Hey, we have information we can find within ourselves based upon basically the golden rule. And the fact that God has declared, I will write my law on your heart. Okay. That's what he says. I think it was Ezekiel. I could be wrong on that. Or maybe it was Jeremiah. It was Ezekiel or Jeremiah. I will write my law on your heart. Enlightenment looked at the moral compass of man and said, hey, what if we just start practicing the things that I would like done to man? That was the enlightenment. So in other words, they want to reject doing good as based on our moral conscience. They want to reject legal equality. In other words, they want to reject the civil rights law. The Civil Rights Act, which they got, which prevents people from discriminating based upon color. They want to reject constitutional neutrality. In other words, the Constitution declares the same rights for everybody, irregardless of races or classes or anything like that. They literally want to challenge the concept that everybody is equal in God's eyes. Number two, storytelling, telling counter storytelling and naming one's own reality. Well, that would be postmodernism. This is my reality. The use of narrative, which is storytelling to illuminate and explore lived experiences of racial oppression. I got news for you guys. I was that kid in school that got beat up and teased all the time. All right, I was the guy that they, they kicked them. They th took my toys. They threw my books out of my hands. They beat me up in the hallways when they could. I mean, I was that guy. And it was, it sucked. Okay. All I had to do with is the fact that kids are cruel. <laughs> okay. I'm not running around going, ah, woe is me. Here's the, here's, here's the point. Okay. The point is, is that, Everyone has problems. Everyone has some prejudice against them. Everyone has things that are positive form, things that are negative form. The people who succeed are those who don't dwell on the problems in the past. The people who succeed are the ones that look at the past and go, oh, that sucks. Let's move forward. That's it. Let's move forward. 
They want to use storytelling instead. Revisionist interpretations of the American Civil Rights Law and Progress. Now, revisionist interpretations means that you're going to change the past to measure what you're doing. This is like revisionist history. We're going to rebuild history on what we want people to see. This is what the 1619 Project is doing. Um, and so criticism of civil rights scholarship and anti-discrimination law uh, so Derek Bell, one of CRT's founders, argues that civil rights advocates uh, advances for black people coincided with the self-interest of white elites. In other words, all of the neutrality granted under the law is just because white people put it there for their own privilege and power. You have to be a special kind of stupid to think that, I think. Um, intersectional theory, examination of race, sex, class, natural origin, sexual orientation, how they combine. So this is that intersectionality plays out in various settings. In other words, how the needs of a Latin female are different from those of a black male who whose needs um, and whose needs are the ones promoted. So this is putting everybody up on this hierarchy. Uh, who's the highest hierarchy? I mean, it'd be the black transgender female um, who's also a lesbian. That's like the highest. You got the most protection You're up there. You want the bottom of the class? It's completely, definitely, and totally the white Christian men. We're going to prove that to you later. Stick around to the end. We're going to prove that to you later. A friend of mine's been saying this is all about attacking the Christians. Guys, we've seen our very first data point for that. You're going to have to wait for a few more minutes to see what that data point is. It's shocking, to say the least. And a company in our town, among other places, of course. Standpoint epistemi uh, epistemology. Uh, so the view that the number of minority has authority and the ability to speak about racism that members of other racial groups do not have. This is when they say, you can't speak. I can't possibly speak for the experiences of black people because I'm just this, this racist white guy. In fact, I'm so racist, I don't even know how racist I am. Okay. Um, and so that's really what they're talking about. Standpoint epistemology basically says that a, a person who comes in here who's part of the minority oppressed group, they have the standing to talk where somebody who's part of the oppressor group does not. Which is, by the way, Marxism. FYI. Essentialism versus non-essentialism. Structural determinism. We're not going to read the rest of these. Um, Non-white cultural natural separatism. Okay, this one down here. Um, exploration of more radical views argue for separation and reparations from foreign aid, including black nationalism. Well, who's giving the reparations for all of the poor white slaves down in South Africa right now? Right now? I don't see these people running over there and yelling about freeing the slaves. Happens. Happens. So I wanted to go back and look at critical race theory in line of scripture. And rather than reinventing the wheel, I found this very wonderful arg uh, article from Life Point Church. I know nothing about this church, so I don't know if they're otherwise heretical, but this workup was absolutely amazing. They talk about the critical race theory versus the biblical worldview, and this defines very well. I'm going to have this linked in the description here when we edit this video out. Uh, this is definitely worth the read because this is actually showing us why they're completely incompatible, complete with scripture. Okay. Now, of course, as we get into this, the scripture that I wanted to point to, Galatians 328. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free man. There's neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ. And that's really the thing. Uh, you can add various colors in there. Um, of course, if you think that the race wars are bad now, you should have seen the Jews versus the Gentiles in those days. Um, from Ephesians chapter four, verses 17 through 22. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord that you walk no longer as the Gentiles also walk, who in the futility of their mind being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have learned him and have been taught in him, just as truth in Jesus, just in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old life, which is being corrupted in accordance with lusts of deceit. Okay, we need to lay aside a lot of our old stuff. We need to move forward into what we need to be doing. So with that, 
Um, the section one defines what critical race theory is. We've already discussed this. It is separating people into oppressed and oppressor. The oppressed is the racial minority. The oppressor is the evil white people that are evil white Christians. We're going to get into that in a moment. Okay. And so it kind of gets into that. Uh, section two, what about the biblical worldview? So in the biblical worldview, they do a lot of good scripture here. They talk about how God creates the universe. It talks about um, the fall of man. It talks about redemption. And really, there is this, uh, there is this two-class society, those that are in Adam and those that are in Christ. And so there is this dichotomy. It just has nothing to do with race. It has to do with a state before God. Now, it does talk here about... Um, Christian historic Christian teaching on racism and the most underlying uh, fundamental error underlying the egregious sin of racism is on the idea that race is a biologically significant factor in determining identity. This isn't to say that race doesn't have an important role in determining culture or experiential differences among people, but it is to say that there's nothing fundamentally different about two human beings belonging to a different race. God did not create one particular type of man. He created Adam. He created human beings who had uh, be able to represent the whole of humanity in the Garden of Eden. The color of Adam's skin was irrelevant to his role as mankind's representative. When God created the first two humans, the only distinction he made them was to make their biological sex, which of course is also under assault. Because all humans are equally created in God's image, all humans are equally worth dignity, honor, and respect. The life of each man and woman is sacred and should be protected and valued at the levels of society by all the image bearers. Being created in God's image sets humanity apart from the rest of the creation as rulers and subduers. Being made in the image of God also means no single group of people is naturally fit to rule over others because of some biological differences, meaning all humans are, at their core, similar. So here they get into where the scripture is. Racism as a sin of partiality, hatred, injustice, and being false witnesses. Okay, so this is what they write. Racism develops as a result of the sin of partiality. He goes into here, James 2, 1, 8, and 9, which is talking about sin of partiality. In this case, he's talking about the partiality as results to money. And But racism, when we start favoring one group over another on the basis of their skin color, that is a problematic thing. And it doesn't happen a lot. Sure, that happens occasionally, but it doesn't happen a lot. Underlying sin of racism is the sin of hatred. First uh, John 4.20, if anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. So any hatred towards fellow man of any race. Racism falls in the sin of injustice. And Micah, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Racism can also be seen as the sin bearing false witness. You shall not bear false witness. Why? Well, to declare that somebody did something wrong because of the color of their skin. That is also a sin. So as Christians, we cannot do any of those things. Any good, sound Christian who reads our scripture won't. Now they ask, is critical race theory compatible with a biblical worldview? They talk here about agreements between them. Number one, emphasis on systemic oppression and injustice rather than merely individual acts of prejudice. So in this case, yeah, there is some, there is some degree in that the mankind outside of Christ is oppressed. Jesus came to identify with the poor and oppressed, a group CRT attempts to speak for. Three, we should be watchful for the different ways which sinful attitudes and prejudices can become pervasive in society, something they say is a given. And all people should be given equal opportunities as they are accorded with God's design. Now, there are several, however, disagreements where they are contrary. CRT presents fundamentally flawed epistemology, rejecting transcendent objective truth as binding standard for all people. In other words, they want their own subjective storytelling. Very interesting. The Bible doesn't limit the sins of partiality, hatred, and justice, or being false witnesses to those in power, thus making the definition of racism a prejudice plus power incompatible with the Bible's teaching. 
The Bible explicitly forbids mob rule and deference to the poor. Uh, so these verses here in, in Exodus 23, 2 through 3, this is exactly where our culture is right now. We are committing this sin. This verse says a judge may not go with what will make the mob happy and they must not go specifically ruling for the side of the oppressed. Very fascinating. The Bible categorizes of all humanity within a def default state of in Adam. Therefore, one group of people, uh, whites in CRT's case, are not born more guilty than racial minorities, and racial minorities are not born more innocent than whites. White people are not born guilty of sins of past generations who happen to have the same skin color. Each man will be given account of his own sin. The Bible does not frame inequality of outcome between different groups and people as something inherently wrong, as CRT does. The Bible forbids evil suspicion, making CRT's inherent suspicions about white people sinful. And eight, CRT addresses the wrong problem, thus will never end racism. And then they have a lot of more stuff down here. We're going to let you guys read the article on that because it is so telling. That is what it is. Now, for my friend who I believe is watching, um, who's always talking about how Christians, uh, it, this is ultimately an assault on Christians, but they're just not there yet because they can't. Well, here's your first data point. Raytheon this week. This is one of America's, I th they say here, and Daily Mail says here, it's America's second largest defense contractor. They tell their staff to identify their white privilege and go give those with marginalized identities the floor during meetings. And part of this was, if you are white or Christian is explicitly in their terms. Again, I'll have this. These are the... Stronger Together Employee Guide. This is almost a year old. These just leaked out. So here we are. Here's the um, all the different things. Here's your changes. Uh, mindfully hand out high value products. Um, respond quickly to double standards and idea theft. Seek opinions of those who don't speak up. Learn to say whatever. And uh, as we get down though to near the bottom, there is a... Um, uh, there is, it might be this one. So the text here is very small. You're not going to be able to see it, but I will link this to you so you can actually see what it says. I think it's actually the next block down. Uh, it's this one here. It's under the becoming an ally. So this part here, let me see. Oh, I can zoom this up quite a bit. Okay. So you're going to look up here at this sentence here. Okay, privilege is all, okay. This is in their actual documentation. Uh, wealth winning psychologist and professor at New York University, Stern Business, Dolly, uh, Dolly Corf writes In America, if you are white or Christian or able bodied or straight or English speaking, these particular identities are easy to forget. This is called ordinary privilege because these identities and traits easily blend with other people and norms around us. This is officially in Raytheon's documentation, calling us Christians to be the racists we are. Isn't that exciting? There, folks, is your data point. This is an assault on Christian thought. It's not just an assault on people you disagree with. This is an assault on Christian thought. So. As Southern Baptist Convention opened the door to CRT, it is causing a giant rift. We're going to see them split over this, like we saw the Methodists split over their issues. The fact of the matter is, critical race theory is not in any way compatible with Scripture. It needs to be outright denied, and churches need to get back to teach Scripture. One of the largest churches in my town is now embracing critical race theory. Over half the churches in this town, I can't say over half, a significant number of churches in this town, they're flying flags that are incompatible with the teachings of the Bible that they profess to believe. We need to be teaching the Christians to open our scriptures. Open these scriptures. 
read it, apply it to our lives. And as Jesus tells the woman at the well, go and sin no more. That is our task. That is what we are to do. If you want to help support the channel, definitely have a look at our website at ourwalkinchrist.com. We have our daily walks are posted there as podcasts. We have our latest series, uh, which we will return to series probably in a month or two. We have our newsletter there. We have several books. If you want to uh, learn more about the Christian faith, I have several books here on uh, Christian teaching. Uh, another book is coming out here pretty soon. We'll have all that information uh, out there as well, but definitely have a look over there. We are also on a number of social media sites. You can find at the top of the screen. Have a look at the website, ourwalkinchrist.com. And we do have some supporter sites as well. Uh, we are on Patreon, T-O-M-M, on Patreon, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. And we are also on thinklifemedia.com. With that, guys, thank you for watching and hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.